Hello folks, welcome to yet another exciting video from Simply Learn. Are you ready to unlock the doors to a thriving career in cloud computing? The job market for AWS is booming and companies are on lookout for talented individuals like you. AWS holds a significant 32% share in cloud computing job listings, making it the go-to choice for many businesses. What makes AWS so appealing? Well, it's known for its cost effectiveness, scalability, and rock solid security features. However, to stand out and succeed in the job market, it's essential to be fully prepared to ace those interviews. In this video, we have compiled the top 20 AWS interview questions that will not only sharpen your knowledge, but also boost your confidence when facing those crucial interviews. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before we get started, if you are interested to dive into the world of cloud and get certified, don't forget to explore Simply Learn's Cloud Architect Master's program. This course is designed to equip you with expertise in AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform right from the basics. You'll gain mastery over the architectural principles and services of these leading cloud platforms. Learn to design and deploy highly scalable, fault-tolerant applications and acquire the skills needed to evolve into a proficient AWS and Azure Cloud professional. For more information, check out the course link in the description and pin comments below. So, no more waiting around. Let's get started. As a bonus in this video, along with the top 20 frequently asked questions, we will also cover five questions based on case studies that you can definitely expect in your AWS interview. So the first question is, what is AWS and what are its key components? AWS or Amazon Web Services is a cloud computing platform offered by Amazon. It provides a wide range of services like computing power, storage options, and networking capabilities. Key components include EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud for virtual servers, S3 or Simple Storage Service for scalable storage, RDS, Relational Database Service for managed databases, and IAM, Identity and Access Management for security. You can also imagine AWS like a huge toolbox which has everything you need to build and run your applications without worrying about the infrastructure. You have EC2, which is like the section for renting virtual computers, S3 for storing your files securely, RDS for managing databases, and IAM for controlling who can access what. Now, what is the difference between EC2 and S3? EC2 provides resizable compute capacity in the cloud, allowing you to run applications. S3, a simple storage service on the other hand, is storage for the internet. EC2 is like having a computer in the cloud, while S3 is more like having a hard drive in the cloud where you can store files. Think of EC2 as a rented computer in the cloud. You can install software, run applications, and do pretty much anything you would do on a regular computer. Now, S3, on the other hand, is more like a giant external hard drive. You can store all your files there, like images, videos, or backups, and access them from anywhere on the internet. Now, let's move on to the third question. Explain the concept of Elastic Load Balancing, or ELB. Now, ELB automatically distributes incoming application traffic across multiple targets, such as EC2 instances, containers, and IP addresses to ensure no single resources is overwhelmed. ELB is like having a traffic manager for your website or application. It automatically spreads incoming visitors or requests across multiple servers so that no single server gets overwhelmed. It's like having a multiple cache registers open at a store during rush hour. Let's move on to the next question. What is auto-scaling in AWS? Auto-scaling automatically adjusts the number of EC2 instances in a group based on demand. It helps maintain application availability and allows you to only pay for the resources you actually need. So auto-scaling is like having a magical elastic band around your servers. When there's a sudden spike in traffic to your website or application, auto-scaling automatically adds more servers to handle the load. And when the traffic slows down, it removes those extra servers so you don't waste money on unused resources. Now, describe the difference between IAM users, groups, and roles. IAM users are individuals within your AWS account, while groups are collections of users. 
Roles are similar to users, but they are meant to be assumed by other AWS services or users for specific tasks. Okay, imagine you are the boss of your AWS account. IAM users are like your employees. They can log in and do stuff, but only what you allow them to. Groups are like teams of users with similar permissions, and roles are like special hats that users or even other services can wear to do specific tasks. Now, the sixth question is, what is Amazon RDS? Amazon RDS, a relational database service, is a managed relational database service that makes it easier to set up, operate, and scale a relational database in the cloud. Amazon RDS is like having a personal database expert on the call. It takes care of all the basic details of setting up, operating, and scaling a relational database like MySQL or possibly SQL, so you can focus on building your app instead of worrying about database management. Now, explain the difference between Amazon RDS and Amazon DynamoDB. RDS is for relational databases and SQL Server, while DynamoDB is a fully managed NoSQL database service provided by AWS. RDS is like a traditional database with tables, rows, and SQL queries, while DynamoDB is more like a super fast, super flexible storage system for all kinds of data, from simple text to complex JSON documents. It's like comparing a filling cabinet to a magic box that can hold anything you throw at it. Now, what is Amazon VPC? Amazon VPC, or Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, is like having your own private corner of the AWS cloud. It's a virtual network that you can set up and customize to keep your resources isolated and secure. Think of it as creating your own little neighborhood within the vast city of AWS. Now, what is the difference between public and private subnets in Amazon VPC? Imagine public subnets are houses with doors facing the street. They're directly accessible from the internet. Private subnets, on the other hand, are like houses with backyard entrances. They're shielded from direct internet access, making them perfect for storing sensitive data or running internal services. Moving on to the 10th question, how does CloudFront work and what are its benefits? CloudFront is like having a network of delivery trucks all around the world, ready to bring your content closer to your users. When someone requests a file from your website or application, CloudFront finds the nearest delivery truck or edge location and serves the file from there, reducing latency and speeding up the overall experience for your users. Now, what is the difference between Amazon S3 and EBS? Amazon S3 is a giant storage locker in the cloud where you can dump all your files and they'll be safe and accessible from anywhere. EBS, on the other hand, is more like renting a hard drive that you can attach to your virtual server. You can install your operating system and applications on it just like you would do on a regular computer. Now the next question, explain the difference between the stop and terminate actions in EC2. When you stop an EC2 instance, it's like putting your computer to sleep. All the data and settings are saved and you can start it back up later without losing anything. But when you terminate an instance, it's like shutting down your computer and throwing it away. You lose everything and you can't bring it back. Now, what is AWS Lambda and how does it work? AWS Lambda is like having a team of tiny workers waiting in the cloud to execute your code whenever you need them. You just upload your code to Lambda, define when you want it to run, and Lambda takes care of everything else. Scaling, monitoring, and billing you only for the compute time you actually use. So let's move on to the next question. How do you secure your data at rest in AWS? Think of securing your data address like locking it in a safe. AWS offers various encryption options to keep your data safe from crying eyes, whether it's stored in S3 buckets, databases like RDS, or even on your EBS volumes. You can use AWS managed encryption keys or bring your own keys for added security. Moving on, what is cloud formation and how does it work? Cloud formation is like having a blueprint for your entire AWS infrastructure. Instead of manually setting up each resource, you define everything you need in a template file using simple JSON or YAML syntax. Then, with a single click, CloudFormation creates and configures all the resources for you, saving your time and ensuring consistency. Now the next question, explain the differences between Amazon S3, EBS, and EFS. Amazon S3 is a versatile storage solution for the files of all types, accessible from anywhere. EBS or Elastic Block Store is more like a traditional hard drive attached to a single EC2 instance. 
perfect for storing data that requires low latency access. Now, EFS or Elastic File System on the other hand, is like a shared network drive that multiple EC2 instances can access simultaneously, making it ideal for shared file storage across multiple instances. Now, what is Amazon SQS and how does it work? Amazon SQS or Amazon Simple Queue Service is like having a virtual queue for your messages in the cloud. When one part of your application sends a message, SQS holds onto it until another part of your application is ready to receive and process it. It helps decouple different components of your system, making them more resilient and scalable. Yeah, now the next question is, what is the difference between Amazon S3 and Glacier? Amazon S3 is like having a storage locker where you can quickly access your files whenever you need them. Glacier, on the other hand, is more like putting your files in cold storage. It's cheaper but slower to retrieve. It's perfect for data that you don't need to access frequently, but still want to keep for archival purposes. Now, what is AWS Elastic Beanstalk? You can relate AWS Elastic Beanstalk to a personal chef who takes care of all the cooking and serving while you focus on enjoying your meal. So it automates the deployment and management of your web applications, handling all the heavy lifting of provisioning servers, load balancing, and scaling. So you can just upload your code and let Elastic Beanstalk take care of the rest. Now coming to the last question on our list, how do you monitor AWS resources and services? Monitoring AWS resources can be explained as having a dashboard that shows you how your applications and services are performing in real time. AWS offers various monitoring tools like CloudWatch, which collects and tracks metrics, logs, and events from your resources. And AWS Trusted Advisor, which provides recommendations for optimizing your AWS environment based on best practices and cost efficiency. And that wraps up our rundown of the top 20 AWS interview questions. But wait, let's have a look at those five bonus questions now. Number one, you are setting up a website for a small shop using AWS. How would you choose the right AWS tools to make sure the website stays fast and reliable, whether there are only a few visitors or a lot of people shopping at once during a big sale? Your second question, Imagine you are like a tech detective investigating why your website's database is slow for a busy online shop. How would you use AWS tools to find out what's causing the problem and make the database super fast again? Number three, as a hero for a startup, your mission is to control their AWS costs while still allowing them to grow. How would you do this, making sure they can expand without spending too much money or slowing down their operations? Now your fourth question, a non-profit organization needs help migrating their data to AWS. What steps would you take to ensure a smooth transition, considering their limited budget and technical expertise? And the last question we have, a startup wants to store their customer data securely on AWS. How would you recommend they do this, considering both cost and security? Try answering these questions in the comment section. Let's have a discussion there. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in the future videos, please let us know in the comments below. Also, do let us know if you want us to make a detailed video for these questions. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.